Yeah, that's me. <laughs> you know, my thought was like, yeah, those shoes in the gas. There's some musicians in bars getting beer, but it's not really. It's roller derby. I can't believe it. It's gore, gore. Yeah, we're girls. the gore, gore roller girls. And you're murder cat. I'm murder cat. And I'm murder mom. And you're murder mom. Murder mom. And murder cat, tell us how, how long have you been in this uh, in this league? I think I'm going into my fifth year now. Oh yeah. Um, I initially started with the league in Oshawa, the Durham Region Roller Derby, and just with life, I ended up moving here to Toronto, and now I play for Toronto Roller Derby. And uh, so, how did you do this? How did you get your mom in? <laughs> well, after my first year, I decided it would be a fun birthday gift to just buy my mom a pair of skates, Is sign her up for the fresh meat program, and get her in there full force just to try it out. Wow, that's so great. All right, Murder Mom, what do you think? I think it's the best thing that's ever happened in my life after her. So I think it's I think it's amazing. I can't believe she did that, and I can't believe I stuck with it. So I'm really I'm really happy to be here. Oh, that's great. How long have you been in now? Uh, three and a half years. I wow, think. that's awesome. I still also started in Durham and then came to oh, Toronto did you? Okay. with Kitty. Yeah. And uh, so I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit and get a get a load of these outfits. It's awesome. Wow. We actually order them online, and it's been a tradition running for many years, pretty much since the startup of the Gorgor -Gor Roller Girls. They've been wearing elaborate, bold leopard print outfits, and eventually our uniform just turned into the bathing suit. So, That's great. pretty good. It helps. Derby is all about body positivity, so, I mean, it was hard thinking I have to come onto this team and wear a bathing suit for the first time in 24 years. But once you start playing with these women and the, you have the, the positivity all around you for this team and the league, you just want to do it. Like, it, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't, this is part of your, your soul now, you know, once you're on this team. So. Wow. Yeah, you just put on the bathing suit and you own it. You become the That's core. Awesome. <laughs> Well, it was a great match tonight. What is it? Match game? Had, what about. About. about a, a great bout tonight. And you were on fire. I mean, you're a, you're a scorer. Yep. So I'm a jammer. I score the points most of the time. And, uh, <laughs> and your position is uh, I'm more a blocker. defensive. Yeah, yeah. Blocker. Blocker. Maybe. And so do you want to tell us more about the game? Yeah, sure. Uh, just to summarize quickly, there are two teams on the track at each time. There are five skaters. Four are called blockers and one's called a jammer. The jammer is the only person who can score points, and they score one point for every opposing blocker or skater that they pass while going around the circular track. So the blocker's job is to form a wall, not let that jammer through, and the jammer's job is to bust right on through and keep scoring the points. So I guess the argument is, who hits harder, the blockers or the scorers? It, it depends on their training, and sometimes they're a double threat, they're both jammer and blocker. If they're trained in both, it could be it could be devastating either way. The jammer usually has more speed if they're coming around on their second pass, so that's obviously an advantage. Uh, we call it coming in hot. When you have that fire, you have that speed, and you just bust right on through. Um, otherwise, it's dependent on the skater of the day. Sometimes it's not even effective to hit. It's more effective to hold them behind you. Sure. And uh, tell us about the injuries. I mean, bruises mostly, or...? Uh, a lot of bruises. I have to explain to a lot of people why I always have bruises every week on me. Um, there's a few injuries. I guess it's more higher. It's higher injury than than a lot of sports. I was off for 14 weeks not. last year. Oh, were you? Yeah, for a bad sprain. A couple of people had broken their legs. It, it happens because you're you're doing it on wheels. You're doing it on. But you're trained to uh, fall and take hits, so it doesn't always happen. And so when your daughter first got in this, what did you think? I was the mom that was like, oh. every time she got hit, it was like, oh no, I hope she's okay. And then you get over it. It's like, they do it enough times, like, oh, she's fine. You know? Was me and the bleachers today. <laughs> <laughs> At first, she didn't even know what it was, so it wasn't until the first game when she was like, wait a minute, this is what you're doing every Wednesday night? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it's a bit crazy. Cool. So, um, where do you go from here? Is there, a, is there like a world championship? Um, it depends. Most leagues have a travel team that is 
usually a Division One or Division Two. Um, if you're on the travel team, you will travel around and develop a set of rankings within the other teams in the world, mostly in North America. Um, so our travel team here, it's called the Toronto Roller Derby All-Stars. They usually travel to the northern states and a little bit around Ontario, little Montreal, here and there. Um, but you can really alter your level of commitment to the sport and take it far if you have the time and energy to do that. And uh, you know, I noticed there was a lot of family people here. There was kids, adults of all ages. Your mother was here, so that's three generations in the house. My stepsisters were here. Uh, my stepfather was so here. So it's a real, you know, yeah. I noticed there was a lot of kids, like right down in the front, and uh, they, they just seemed to love it. So, what do you think of the the family affair? Uh, we've actually made a huge push over the last year to make roller derby a more accessible and welcoming environment for people of all shapes, sizes, ages, and people with disabilities. We've been slowly working step by step to make it a sport that is for anyone to come and watch. Yeah, so because it's, it seems violent at first, but really we just care about the development of the sport and exposing it to the world. We want people to know what roller derby is. It's a safe space for kids, it's a safe space for families, and it's a safe space for us skaters as well. Which is very, important. Very empowering to women as well. I really uh, appreciate that factor. I remember roller derby from the old days where it was the mm -hmm. bank tracks and uh, it was on TV a lot. So what happened to those days and, and like, is that coming back? Um, there are bank tracks in the States and some people still choose to play that kind of derby. It is a lot more dangerous because you have the rails, okay. it's high speed. Um, but also our whole sp sport is derived from that original bank track derby. It used to be more of a show and now it's definitely more of a sport. So we have a rule set, we have referees. Um, everything is not about hurting one another or making a show, it's about playing the sport and scoring the points, getting through and feeling wholesome as a team. Awesome. Listen guys, I really appreciated this interview. Um, you know, it was just a pleasure to come see the the sport and uh, to talk to you guys it was just an honor yeah, thanks. thanks for thanks for letting me do this oh, and, uh, thanks for having us <laughs> oh you're, you're very welcome Hopefully and uh, we brought you into the sport and um i'm sure you're going to the after party now so i can help you clean up and we'll get out of here how's okay. that sound sweet that sounds great <laughs> cheers guys thanks yes, very much later.